So um, I just flew in uh, this morning on a red eye from uh, Los Angeles. I live in Santa Barbara, California. You can hear from the accent. I'm uh, not born American, although I am an American uh, citizen. Uh, I, I love this country. And uh, I suppose making waves is a rather apt symbolism for me as I'm the surfer dude. <laughs> That's what I was called in the entrance. Um, so this statement, drop a stone, create a ripple, build a wave. I've really lived that mission since the 24th of April 2006, which was a dreadful day in my life. It was a day when I lost my beautiful 15 and a half year old son, Matthew, who played a dangerous game that he heard about at school called the choking game. He was at a prep school, all the kids wore school ties, and it was a day that took my life down a different path. And uh, in that cataclysmic moment, um, and over the period that followed, my wife and I certainly uh, changed our lives and went down a different path. And over the years, uh, since that day, I've learned that words have incredible power. Um, after that loss, I started speaking to all sorts of different community groups, religious groups, uh, large corporations, some of the largest corporations in the world, some of the fastest growing companies in the world, uh, PTSD survivors, prisons, schools, universities, eminent universities. Uh, and really, my message over the last few years has been the same. How can you activate purpose to live a better life, and how can you activate purpose to help others live a better life. And I'm going to show you tonight a remarkable little tool that uh, can fulfill these functions. It's super simple. It's called the code, and it's open source code. So it's something you can put in your pocket, you can take home with you, and you can use it yourselves, or we can use it with your family, your colleagues at work, perhaps if you're in a sports team with a sports team members. So I want to talk to you a little bit today about the origin, the application, and a little bit of research into this uh, wonderful little uh, intervention method that, uh, that psychologists call it, they call it an intervention tool. So uh, it's really about the code for the next wave, like what, what's going to be next? What's going to happen in our lives next? And over the last uh, 24 months or 26 months since COVID started, I've spoken to over 200,000 people. And I've come to understand that words have great power, words have got great power to divide and unite, as we saw what happened in our great nation on 1-6, when the nation was wrecked by the despairing power of words. Words have great power to disrupt. Words have great power to transform. Words have great power to disconnect and connect. And these TEDx events, when we bring people together, are an amazing way for us to connect together as human beings. Words also have great power for despair and hope. So our words are the words that define our mindset. It's not the words of political leaders. It's not the words of Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, JFK, Barack Obama. The list can go on. But our, our words are the words that really define our mindset. So over the last number of years, I've asked people at the events that I've participated in and sometimes in front of many, many thousands of people, both in person and virtually, send me a word, one word, that describes how you're feeling. And here's an example of a word cloud from a few thousand people. Exhausted, disappointed, anxious, uncertain, unmotivated, anxious, underappreciated. I call this a sad mindset. And the four principal words that I've seen over the last 26 months have been stress, anxiety, depression, and disconnection. These have been the four fundamental words that really describe the malaise that has really swept over our wonderful country and across our beautiful world. So how can you move from the malaise, a sad mindset, to this? This is a sample at the end of presentations. I'll ask people, what word are you going to take home with you? So you can see the 360-degree turn by using this simple method, purpose, hope, gratitude, commitment, inspiration. It's a complete turn from stress, anxiety, depression, disconnection in such a simple, simple way. So words have got great power to activate transformational words, and our words have got the greatest power of all. So I want to share this code with you, a simple way to shift mindset. And there might be someone sitting in the audience tonight that's had a hard time, that is enduring something that 
they don't feel that they can endure, perhaps this little tool can help. So it's a simple tool to activate the power of purpose. And from purpose comes power. Purpose is our North Star. Power to change our mindset. And the code method is really simple. It's a simple way to find and define one's purpose. Find your purpose, find your power, and find your path. What is purpose? Purpose is a committed intent to achieve aims that are meaningful to self and to the broader world. So purpose is a North Star. I like to think that there's five elements to purpose. There's a little acronym I wrote up there, AMAT. Purpose is aspirational. It's our North Star. It's bigger than us. Purpose is inspirational. Our purpose inspires others. It inspires our colleagues. It inspires our families. It inspires people around us. Purpose is moral. It's essentially true. In this world of untruth that we're living in, our purpose is fundamentally moral and true. Purpose is authentic. There's no BS associated with purpose. And while our purposes might be completely contrasting and different to us, they are absolutely authentic. And purpose is timeless. It's not like a smart goal, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-sensitive. Purpose is forever. Purpose is, is timeless. So why is purpose important to every single one of you three or 400 people that are sitting here? Interestingly, here's a longitudinal study of 73,000 people. Having a sense of purpose in your life makes you live twice as long. So if that's not an inducement to living a purposeful life, what else can be? And then there's all sorts of statistics around companies that work with purpose. Greater engagement, motivation, productivity, and retention. And then I've been in business, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. From a strictly bottom line and top line revenue perspective, purpose-led businesses perform 42% better than, purpose, than businesses that are simply in business to be in business. So my mission is to create a positive wave of, of purpose across the planet. That's been my mission since I lost my beautiful son, Matthew. So just to give you a bit of background about me, yes, I'm the surfer dude. I surfed all my life. I met a woman tonight from, uh, from the area who also started surfing in 1965 like I did. I won my first major event when I was a teenager. It's called the Pipeline Masters. It's one of the greatest events in the world. I became a world champion. Uh, I was on the covers of all the surf magazines. Let me tell you, it was a fun life. I traveled around the world. I won my 19 major pro events. I was the youngest guy to win. I was the oldest guy to win. Every single record that I had was shattered by a guy called Kelly Slater. But it was wonderful to be involved in this new professional sport, creating the sport and also creating businesses around the sport. I created my first company called Instinct when I was 22 years old. Uh, and then I started sponsoring other surfers. I called it Instinct because the best moments in surfing are when you ride inside the spinning tunnel of water and the best moments happen when you're operating uh, on instinct. I also had the opportunity of sponsoring other surfers to become world champions. I sponsored this young guy, an Australian, Tom Carroll, to win two world titles, uh, and a number of other surfers to win world titles as well. And then at the height of my career, I got a call from a guy who said, Sean, one of the most famous waves in the world called Malibu is facing an environmental threat. We're going to create a foundation called Surfrider Foundation. We want you to be our first ambassador and we want you to be the first member. He said, we really need a poster for the organization, and we need some words. And I wrote those five words, do a good turn today, in 1984. And for me, that's really been a turning point in my life, like I wrote, do a good turn. It was a turning point when I realized that it's so important for the soul to get involved in environmental causes and an environmental uh, movement. When I retired from the tour, I sold my company Instinct, and for two years, I worked for this wonderful company called Patagonia. I'd never heard of them. I just walked in, worked for Patagonia, worked for Yvonne and the, and the team, and Yvonne would say to me, hey, Sean, you've got to understand, doing good is good for business. And then a month ago, he gave away his $3 billion company, company and here's straight from the New York Times. Instead of going public, you could say, we're going purpose. After leaving Patagonia, my wife and I started a new brand. We called it Solitude. And... Um, we located our brand right across the road from one of the most famous surfing breaks in the world, a place called Rincon. When the surf is good at Rincon, you can get a wave of about a mile. Uh, I'm sitting at my desk, my office is right across the road from the freeway, and I get a call from a guy, Sean, 
Rincon's facing an environmental problem. I need your help, just like I needed your help with Surfrider. He said, it's a $30 million problem. You've got a $100 budget to help me solve this problem. I'm going, what's the problem? He said, all the homeowners are connected up to septic tank systems. When it rains, the septics fill up and overflow, and they flow out into the river, and they're making the surface sick. I said, well, how can I help with $100? He said, well, I'm going to bring a group of kids down to the beach. I'm going to bring the local media. I'm going to bring the state water board, the local officials down, and I want you to give something to the kids to create awareness of this problem, to empower and inspire them. For 100 bucks, 100 kids. So I went home that night and I wrote this. And I'll promise you, I will absolutely unequivocally state that what I wrote here in 15 minutes, 12 lines, every line beginning with I will, 105 words changed my life. My life went down a different path. Not in that instant, but over a period of evolution, this has become my mantra, and millions of people have now written their own code. So I printed up a little card, gave 100 cards to the kids that came down to the beach, gave them away to the media, turned into a groundswell. We solved the environmental problem, but the cards just kept on going. I'm sitting out in the lineup after I've written a book about the code, and a guy comes up to me, he said, Sean, I would love you to come to my local school and talk about the code, about your new book, to the kids. The book was an exploration of those 12 lines. Why did I write, I will always paddle back out? Why did I write, I will never turn my back on the ocean? So I go down to the local school and I'm chatting to the kids. And while I'm chatting to the kids, I go, surface code was my code. I wrote it. 12 lines, every line beginning with I will. What about your code? What about you writing down your purpose? What about you writing down your passion? What about you finding your path? Write your code, 12 lines, every line begins with I will. So the kids wrote their code and about... Uh, a week later, I get back 80 kids, 12 lines, nearly 1,000 lines of code, with the very first line of code being, I will be myself. I will be myself. Words of absolute, unmitigated power. And when I read those words, man, I cried because of what had happened to me and my beautiful boy. And the other incredible words that those kids wrote, I will not do what other people want me to do simply to please others. I could see there was such incredible power and purpose in these words that I immediately phoned up my co-author and I said, let's write another book. And this book is going to be a framework for positive decision-making with every single chapter title written by a student with the very first one will be, I'll be myself. The book became popular and now I get codes from kids all over the world at all sorts of schools. I spoke to 300 kids here earlier today. Some kids will create, create these amazing graphics and they'll create this beautiful art exhibition in their, um, in their schools. I will let my dreams outshine my fears. I will follow my own path. I will hold on to happiness. I went back to grad school. I got so fascinated by the research that I was finding and this outpouring of emotion. And uh, I was the oldest dude at grad school, man. I was studying a Master of Science in Influence and Inspiration. Today it's called Leadership. And I found these amazing studies about emotional contagion, how all of us can impact others through our emotions, both, pos both positively and negatively, and came across this amazing study that Facebook and the National Academy of Sciences did, and they showed that emotions can be spread virally. So whenever you tap out something on your phone, or your PC or your Mac, it's going to impact someone positively or negatively down the line. So I wanted to see if it's possible to create a positive wave across the country. Drop a stone, start a ripple, make a wave across the country. So I hooked up with a big insurance company, and I got students to inspire each other with words of purpose based on this simple equation, I will equals power. And I had the kids today chanting that, I will equals power. So I embarked on a tour, a huge tour, 60,000 students. I thought if, if each kid's got a couple of hundred kids in his network, we can reach over a million kids. So now I'm about to embark on my journey. We printed up hundreds of thousands of these badges, and my first school is a very, very poor school in an area called Katlahong, which is a suburb of Johannesburg. And the day before I'm about to do the event, I get a call from a woman who she says, I'm from China Global Television. We have the biggest TV station in the world. We want to cover your process of empowerment with young kids. And I said, uh, you know, I'm really nervous. 
of you to coming in covering this because South Africa is recently out of segregation. These kids might see me as being a representative of apartheid, an older white dude. I said, can you come a little bit later in the event when I felt the kids out? She said, Sean, I'm coming tomorrow. And this is what she discovered. Let's get the volume going. His finest sporting heroes. Famous for his style of riding the tube section of the wave, Thompson won the International Professional Surfers World Championship in 1977. Considered one of the 10 greatest surfers of all time, he now inspires others to follow his paddle. In this underprivileged school in Katlehong, on the east side of Johannesburg, Thompson shares with youngsters a simple strategy for confronting everyday challenges and making positive, life-changing decisions. It's so wonderful to be inspiring some young kid in Johannesburg or Durban or, or uh, Los Angeles, anywhere, just to know that you drop that little pebble in the water and what's it done? It's created a wave. And that wave is going to go and touch lives. In 12 personal stories, Sean shares the power of I will, a code that carries him through life. While yes, this little code that I wrote, 12 lines that I wrote so many years ago, was about surfing, it's like every line is a metaphor and can be interpreted in so many different ways. It's about how you can be a good person, how you can be a good human being, how you can make a difference in the world, how you can impact others. So I've been on this journey for 10 years now, since I lost my beautiful son, and surfing was this constant. Surfing helped get me back on the path to healing again. Many of these teenagers have barely seen a beach, but the code has resonated among them. I will achieve my goals. I will be better. I will dream big and I will be who I want to be. I will arise and shine and I will face my fears and I will take charge of my life. Although all these youngsters were born after apartheid, many of them are still trapped by poverty. But the code is giving them courage to change their lives. In this country are deprived right, of opportunities and I'll break that cycle of being deprived of opportunities and I'll create opportunities for myself. This book will give me the courage that I don't have. It, I think it will give me that power to do what I want to do and to believe in myself. Sean Thompson's The Code is about many things. Faith, courage, creativity, determination. But above all, it's about promises we make to ourselves, about the future, and to turn hope into action. Julie Shara, CGTN, Katlehong, South Africa. How about those kids, man? Unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Every time I see that, I just get astounded by that outpouring of commitment. So that's the code process. Really simple. Bust out a sheet of paper, 12 lines, every line beginning in with I will and write it in 15 minutes. Hope you enjoyed it and hope that one day you write your code and share your code. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs>